A Sermon for the Third Sunday of Easter The story of the road to Emmaus is, like the story of the prodigal son, is perhaps one of the most best-loved stories in the Bible. At the level of drama, it has everything, sorrow, suspense, puzzlement, a gradual dawning of light. Then, in the second half, unexpected actions, astonishing recognition, a flurry of excitement and activity. A wonderful, unique tale, and at the same time a model for what is being a Christian, what being a Christian is all about. Like Matthew and John, Luke begins his resurrection account with the discovery of the empty tomb, but then follows it up with Jesus meeting two of his followers on a journey rather than at the tomb side. Disciples had just witnessed Jesus being beaten and whipped and put to death on the cross and they saw him die, not lift a finger to help himself or to cry out against his attackers. They were disillusioned, heartbroken, their hopes were all but shattered. Listen to this account by Hilary Faith Jones. There was no point in looking back. Three crosses etched against the sky, brutal violence, bloody scars in the memory. The two travellers were wrapped within themselves, encircled by pain and despair. They didn't notice the man waiting at the side. He made them start, appearing as he did from the quickening shadows. May I journey with you, he said. They nodded silently, barely glancing at him. He fell in step. The conversation was stilted, disjointed, until the bigger of the two stopped and looked at the stranger. Look, we don't want to talk. We've had it up to here. Leave off, will you? The stranger nodded but did not withdraw. He continued to walk with them. The silence became heavy. Then, after a little while, the stranger turned and said, Why do you grieve so? The other disciples wanted to talk and turned towards him. We watched our friend die. But in the dusk he saw again the look of the man he loved. His grief caught him. His voice broke. He turned away to smother the pain. He was more than a friend, said the first disciple. More than, bigger than, stronger than. We had such dreams, such belief that he would change the world. But he's dead, cold and empty, just like our hopes and dreams. You really believed in him. Now he's gone. You think he'll walk back through the door or hear his voice in the crowd or that he's just around the corner. Then you remember he's dead, finished. There's nothing left. The big man stopped. He suddenly felt cold. His voice went very quiet. And worse than all the anger, all the hate, all the guilt, is the pain. Because at the heart of it, we loved him, oh so very much. You could never understand. And because the light had dropped and their hearts were not seeking, they did not see the look on the face of the stranger, or they would have recognised someone who had lived through pain at its most searing, through human grief at its deepest. The moment passed and the stranger fell back into step with them. And this time they all talked of the past, of the present, dying and living, of God and themselves. The journey flew by and they forgot their weary hearts. Before long Emmaus was in front of them. They hesitated at the crossroads, awkward at parting. The disciples didn't want the conversations to end. Come home with us, they said. And the one whose sorrow was caught with rage held out his hand. Please come home with us. Simple words, simple offered, simply received. And at the house of mourning, the lamps were lit. The families gathered around the table. The stranger became the guest. He took the bread and blessed it. As he tore in, in two, he bowed his head, as if he no longer could bear any lack of seeing. And he looked up, his eyes shining with the truth, as he offered the broken bread. Jesus. 
After his death, Jesus would appear alive on 12 separate occasions to at least 550 people. And over those next few weeks, something extraordinary happened to the disciples. They changed from being a group in hiding, frightened of the authorities, to one publicly declaring that Jesus was alive, that they'd seen him. Our reading from Acts records the confidence in which they spoke openly together, calling on the crowd to repent and be baptised in his name, to receive the Holy Spirit, allow the death and resurrection of Jesus to become the badge that they wear, the basis on which they live their lives. Supposing while looking in an old junk shop, you found a pot hidden under a pile of books and bottles, one that had been used to hold flowers in a garden. It was still dirty with soil and leaves and had a crack running through one side. You buy that pot, take it home, spotting under all that grime that is in fact a fine piece of porcelain. You clean it, care for it, repair the crack. Get the dirt and soil out of its pattern, bring it up like new, and then when that's done, put it in a place of honour to show it off to perfect effect. Now supposing the original owner turns up, having been directed to you by the shop owner, ask for it back to use again, to hold flowers in his garden. You would rightly say that the bowl was no longer available, it had been cleaned inside and out, given a whole new use, a use for which it was really suited. The good news is that we are like that bowl. We have been bought back, cleaned and repaired by Jesus. We have all of us been used for all kinds of purposes other than those for which we were made. But as Peter reminds us, Jesus has paid the ultimate price to enable us to be made new again, to be used for the purposes we were made for. The Bible teaches us that the death of Jesus is his great, great triumph over Satan and that his death was necessary to win something that could be won in no other way, to win us. And that his resurrection completes the picture and because of it we have hope beyond the grave, a way to salvation. But Jesus' salvation is more than going to heaven, it's also about rescue here on earth. Today Jesus is here to walk with us on our journey of faith, to take us back to the purpose God made us for, to open our eyes, to set our hearts on fire so we can tell others what we have felt and seen, to meet Jesus who has accomplished his Father's work, who longs to share it, to play our part in his mission of forgiveness and love. The two disciples discovered one of the great truths of the gospel, that Jesus doesn't simply fulfil our hopes, he far exceeds them, and that because of the death and resurrection of Jesus for us, like those disciples, a new story begins. Amen.